All right, well, welcome, everybody. I hope, uh, like Lair and Chris said, you all got some snacks. And if not, you're probably just like waiting for us to get done so you can get as much as you can on the way out, which is all fine. Um, and we do want to thank uh, Kara, Wagner, and Jim. Keith and Jody kind of helped set that up. Yep, thanks. <clears throat> Here's the, the cards I want to share for you today. Uh, made and delivered a meal to a family with a handicapped daughter. Took donuts, I thought that was appropriate. Took donuts to a young Amish couple who will soon be our neighbors. And I, I purposely kept this one for myself before I let anybody else choose out of the rest of them uh, because it's funny, so I hope you enjoy. Paid for two grumpy old ladies' meals at the Honey Creek. <laughs> it, it, it goes on. It goes on. They, they were yelling at our kids who were doing pretty good during the wait, but were not completely silent. Uh, we left together, and they seemed less grumpy. <laughs> and they actually talked to us, unsure if the less grumpy vibe was due to the meal being paid or the realization that they didn't have to listen to the kids anymore. <laughs> um, like I said, welcome. Uh, we purposely wanted the vibe today to be one where we're joining together and there's kind of a celebratory food and upbeat music and a fun time. We got kids, which always brings vibrancy and life uh, to the upstairs. Um, and that all leads me to a question, which is this. Uh, do you think that God likes to party? Yes. Do you think that God likes to party? I think some people's view of God could be such that you think he's a little bit on the boring side, right? Like he's staying at home while other people are out having a bunch of fun. But uh, I think that God likes to party even more than you and I do. I think that's the case. Here's three, re three ways to think about that. Number one, uh, it's not much of a partying book, but the book of Leviticus. If you ever read through the book of Leviticus, uh, God told his people, the Israelites, during, through that book, quite often he said to them, stop and celebrate and party because of what I've done for you. Like he commanded the feasts, you know, Feast of Booth. We read it and you're like, oh, Feast of Booth, Feast of Tabernacles, what on earth? But really what he's saying is stop and have a party because I love you. Number two, what about Jesus? Uh, well, Jesus came bringing uh, the gospel, which is known as great news, right? So he came bringing great news to help poor, to bring people together, to reconnect humankind with the eternal God. And that seems like something worthy of celebrating. In fact, Jesus himself was quite often accused of hanging out with people who are more the fun-loving, partying type than the boring kind of church-going folks. Number three, uh, what about eternity? If eternity looks something like this, uh, at some point there's going to be a great wedding feast, right? Like a, a great banquet with a feast that's going to inaugurate an eternal party. So God's basically saying, at some point I'm going to make all things right and we're going to start a party that's going to last forever. That seems like that God is a partying kind of God. And for that reason, uh, I'm seeing today as something like a, a celebration or a party. And you might ask, a good question would be, well, what on earth, Luke, are we celebrating? Right? That's a, that's a valid question. Um, and it's, it's basically this. It's that we get the chance to voluntarily participate in what God's doing. And I think sometimes in church it comes across as like, I'm trying to guilt you into doing something that you know, is a ministry of the church or whatever. But we want to wipe all that away today and say we have the chance, we, get, we can celebrate the fact that we together have the chance to participate in what God is doing on this earth. Here's an, another way to say it is last week, if you were here when I, somebody vacuumed so that all the pieces are gone now, but uh, when I broke that clay pot, the idea is that we're broken jars of clay and as such, we don't deserve to be part of this eternally good thing that God is doing. And yet, because of Jesus, we get the chance to participate in his reconciliation movement uh, in this world. Or we get a chance to be in a transcendent. We get, you can stop. Here's something I've been given a lot of thought to. We all get the chance to stop our kind of like busy, hectic, uh, troublesome, catastrophic lives 
And the things that we do can like be transcendently, eternally valuable. And I just want to invite you into something like that today, right? Like that you have the ability to be part of something that's going to last into eternity. Um, another way to say that is that we get the chance to worship God. We get the chance together to worship God. And um, here's how Paul puts it in Romans chapter 12. He says, uh, I, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. In other words, in order to do this, you have to give up your body and say, I'm willing to sacrifice, kind of like we sang, I'm willing to give up what all I have is, is for you, God. You can give that up, um, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship which is your spiritual worship. Well, spiritual worship, like what, what on earth does that even mean? It sounds kind of like a church phrase. Like, like what, is that, what is that getting at? Like what are you actually doing? Well, worship comes from uh, the old English, uh, worth-ship, worth-ship. So it's basically the idea, if you're worshiping something, you're saying this thing that I'm worshiping is worth a whole bunch. Right? Like it's, it's worthwhile, it's a valuable thing. And you're saying the thing is so valuable that I'm willing to sacrifice something that I see as valuable for the sake of this other thing that I see as really ultimately the most valuable thing. And I think the problem that we have as Christians is actually not that we necessarily even have a wrong view of worship, but that we have much, much, much too small a view of worship. Too small a view of worship. For instance, Maybe I'm wrong in this, but I think that when we think of worshiping God, we oftentimes place that either within an hour on a Sunday, or maybe you even permit, shrink it down to like the 20 minutes. And of course, we call uh, Lair, wherever he's at, Lair, uh, who I dearly love, we call him the worship leader. And it's like, in, in that sense, we kind of think, well, he's the person who's leading us during this time of worship, which is like the 20 minutes that we're singing songs, which is, I'm not saying that's bad, that's a very valuable thing. What I'm saying is it's too small. Right, like, like I said last week, I think we can worship through confession because we're saying we're a broken pot, which means we're not worthy. That means God is worthy. What I'm saying today is that we can worship through kind of loving outreach to other people. That's another chance, right? Like on a Tuesday or a Friday night or whatever, we can do things that are saying God is worthy, sacrificing what we'd rather do ourselves for God's glory, and that's kind of, that, that idea is, is this idea of worship. <clears throat> um, further down into Romans 12, Paul says this, uh, verse 4, for as in one body we have many members, right, like that's us here, and online or wherever, <clears throat> for as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. Well, this is cool, because that means that we don't all have to worship in precisely the same way. Like, Lord, help us all. Lord, help y'all if I'm up here with a guitar and singing, right? Like, we, we, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> we don't all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ. And here's a phrase that I'm going to unpack next week. Uh, individually members one of another. So let's just skip over that for now. Come back next week. Individually members of one another. Having gifts that differ... According to the grace given to us, let us use them. I want, to, I want to hone in on that last phrase. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. Here's what that's basically saying. We're all different. You all have different giftings from God. We all have different contexts, different families, different levels of freedom. All sorts of stuff about all of us is different, as it well should be. However, we all get to use them as ways to bring glory to God through worship by sacrificing our bodies to do good in this world in the name of, of, of Jesus. And so we don't want to minimize, I don't want to minimize your ability to use your gifts. And so we're going to say, I'm going to invite some other people to come up here today and share some opportunities that you can um, get involved with here through Kish to use your gifts to reach out and, and kind of worship God in these kinds of ways. What I don't want you to hear is that 
Pastor Luke is adding like three other categories that we have to, have to fill in, and then we can't go beyond those things. I don't want you to hear that. What I want you to hear is we're giving you some on ramps here through church, but if you choose these ways, cool. And if you choose other ways to worship, if you keep doing non random act of kindness every week and paying for grumpy old ladies' meals, like by all means, do that too, right? And so um, here's what's going to happen basically I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit down and we're going to invite up a couple of different people to come and share of some of the things that are happening around here. Some of this you might know about, some of this might be new. Uh, I'll come back up and eventually Mark Cowell will close us in prayer. And uh, on the way out, you can get those snacks that you're envisioning in your head right now. Okay, so Julie's going to come up first. Um, Just so you know, uh, Julie's going to come up and share. And then after her, uh, Ben Glick has something to say. And then Kathy Mack and I will be back up. And then Mark, so be patient with us as we all switch around. Good morning. Uh, I'm Julie Martin. My husband is Kirby Martin and our girls, Kendall and Kinley. Um, It's kind of fun to look back and see how long we've been here now. Um, I am going to share a few of the non-random act of kindness cards first. Also with donuts. That must be an easy thing. It says, took sweetie donuts to doctor's staff when taking my father for a checkup. Made several flower arrangements and delivered them to Valley View Haven. And my coworker is dealing with some hard things lately, so I went to work a few minutes early and left flowers on her desk before she got in. These are great reminders that the simple things um, are really great ways to be used. Um, Many of you have heard some announcements I've done for the Indian Valley um, Elementary for us to adopt them and and as a church um, do some great things to show them uh, who we are as a church. And so Pastor Luke had asked me, instead of just sharing kind of continuing what we're doing, but to kind of think of the vision. So um, just super fast, uh, before, I, I didn't come to know the Lord until I was 19, and so growing up, though, I've always had a passion um, for the idea of teaching, and my mom was a teacher, and my aunt was a teacher back in the day. This is going to sound crazy, but like when we didn't go to school, like when we had a day off from school, I actually went to school with my mom or my aunt and sat in their classroom all day long. That would never happen now, but um, I just remember watching my mom and seeing the impact that she made on kids and just how powerful it was. Even at a young age, I just saw that and I just thought, man, I wanna do that. And um, I was also you know, influenced by movies. I cannot think of it, the name of it, but all I can think of is like Gangster's Paradise, Michelle Pfeiffer, she like, this white lady comes in with all these inner city kids and she like changes their lives. Okay, so I'm saying all this to tell you that before even I knew Jesus, I had a vision of like teachers make a huge difference. Um, And, you know, then I came to the Lord, and I do still believe that uh, a calling for teachers is to make a huge difference in the lives of kids. Uh, I stayed home with our kids for a little while, and then I started subbing a few years ago. And I think some of my vision and hope for this, us as a church loving Indian Valley, is because when I stepped into the classroom... My eyes were opened and reminded that it is not easy to make a difference in the lives of children, uh, even less now, because these teachers and administrators have so much to deal with that is just not simple. And so as I was in the classrooms and as I saw more and more of the needs of the kids and all of where they're coming from um, and the heaviness of just what the teachers see and what they have to do. And I spent a lot of time in the first grade classroom at the beginning of the school year, and you're just putting out fire. I mean, you're, you want to teach them, but you're, like, trying to get kids to stop putting pencils up their noses. And, you know, like, there's just a lot that they have to do, and there's, like, 20 of them in the classroom. And so um, as I was thinking about this vision and, and reading in Second Timothy, kind of, what Pastor Luke just shared out of Romans, that we as a body, um, we can be used, Second Timothy 2 um, talked about, in a large house there are instruments, some for noble purposes and some for ig- ignoble. And we can be, if we cleanse ourselves, it says, confess, 
kind of come with a, an awareness of our own civilness. If we, we go, we can be used, I believe, um, as noble purposes, we can be used to make a difference um, for the good works, it says, that the master has prepared for us. So as we think about being here right near a school, my hope is, as Jesus calls us to love our neighbor, um, that the school truly sees us as a church who loves them, who encourages the teachers in the hard work that they're doing by writing notes, who can send a note to the principal or the nurse or the guidance counselor and just encourage them, them in what they're doing. We're going to have opportunity. Pastor Luke's going to send out a list um, to love families by giving them food, to celebrate Thanksgiving, um, being able to, you know, if you're as a body, some are good at writing notes of encouragement. You might be good at baking and serving through baked goods. We, at the beginning of the school year, um, brought in a ton of brownies and cookies and all kinds of things to just start the teachers in encouragement. And they were so thankful for that. And those are the ways that you can be used. Um, I'm hoping to, you know, think about ways that we can go in and uh, we had a small conversation of just serving the teachers in small ways, uh, massages or things that even we don't think about to just continue to encourage them um, and really find ways to help serve the, the students as well. Those who are in need, but also we're going to have a meeting if you're able and want to get involved on November 14th after church. We're going to meet and talk about other ways that we can reach all the students to, to just encourage them in their learning um, and find the needs that are there. So I just am excited um, for what I think God wants to do and challenges us as a church to love them um, as much as we can so that, um, you know, if you run into a teacher or a parent there and you say you go to Kish Valley, they would say, wow, that, that church has really been supportive to us. Um, they've really been there for us in ways that, you know, they might not think that a church would do that. So that is our hope and our prayer as we kind of move forward this school year to see what we can do. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Julie. I'm going to share some uh, <clears throat> random, not random acts here as well. I helped move a heavy picnic table for a neighbor on Saturday, and I gave a wonderfully friendly and helpful receptionist at an office, I frequent a gift card to a local cafe. She figured out it was me and sent a very sweet thank you email. Prayers that she asked me more about Jesus. So that's a really cool story too. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, an opportunity we have with, uh, with, with a foster care system. Um, there's, a, there's a, I guess it's a group um, that they're creating um, to meet foster care families needs who have a placement or, or someone put into their home. Um, and that happens, if you don't know, that could happen at any time. It could get a call at two in the morning, um, eight o'clock at night. And if you don't have the resources, um, that could kind of be an issue. So what the concept here is, um, I guess I can go through a couple stats. You guys can read them. There's typically averaging 55 kids in foster care. And these are kids that they don't choose this lifestyle. They just kind of get forced into it. Um, up to 80 at times. The Gateway Communities um, is, the, is the program that we're working with. It matches Christians, practical needs, clothes, uh, mattresses, pillows, stuffed animals, whatever they need. Um, and then there's also an opportunity for care communities, which we can talk about at a later time, to support foster parents. Um, what we're looking at now is the group is, before they go live on, on the internet, they're looking to get at least 50 um, people or volunteers. And what you'll do is you'll fill out a uh, form online that is your email address. And if someone gets placed into a foster home and there's a need, the social worker will just send this email blast out to all the email addresses that they have and say, we need a mattress for a crib, whatever it is. And you'll get the email. And if you have it, you can respond to the social worker and say, I have a crib, uh, I have a crib mattress. Or if you don't, you just ignore the email. Um, and then the social worker will reach out to you to set up a pickup drop off time um, and go from there. That's, that's all that it is. That's all that the gateway community is. So it's just a way to connect people who have things with people who need things um, is, is basically all that it is. So again, we're looking for, for um, 
50 people before we send this live. I think right now we have six. Um, and this is, at, this is in Mifflin County. This is at the, uh, all the churches in Mifflin County. But um, I think it's a really cool way to, to again, help people that, that need things that we might have and they're just sitting in the closet. Um, simple things. So I think there may be one more slide just to give you a, just to give you a sh- kind of a show of what's up there. Um, this is when you go to paorphancarealliance.com. Um, you'll click on Gateway Communities. This form will come up, and that's what it is. You put your name, uh, your email address in there. Um, and make sure up here in the top left, there's a county. You want to make sure you select Mifflin County. It took me a long time to figure that out, why it wasn't going through. But uh, it'll be Mifflin County, so you would only be contacted with any, any needs from Mifflin County. They're trying to set it up um, in every county in the state right now. So, um, so we would obviously be Mifflin County. Put your email address in, your address, um, state. And once it goes live, you'll start getting emails on needs from social workers that, um, that need things. So if there's any questions, please feel free to ask me, reach out to me, um, head online, check it out, sign up if you're, if you're interested in something like that. Uh, but yeah, so really cool opportunity there too as well. Thanks, Ben. Um, yeah, so there, we're trying to get 50 uh, folks signed up for that in all of Mifflin County, other churches as well. So I thought, you know, if we can get 20 or so people, it's really simple. You're just signing up and saying, you can email me if there's a, a need. There's no obligation to, for you personally to fulfill that need to help kids in foster care. So uh, here you go, Kathy. Uh, I'm going to let her first uh, read uh, her non-random act of kindness, and then we'll get into the next thing. I think so, yeah. Um, The first one is someone shared food with a needy neighbor. I love this one because it obviously came from a young person. My gram and aunt made apple dumplings and thought I would send one with my mom to give to one of her elderly clients. And someone took soup from our newly formed soup ministry to a neighbor's family that was in need of food that week. Thanks, Kathy. Um, so we're actually up here to talk about the soup thing. Uh, and before I do that, I just want to say, like, you know, there's elementary school, there's helping kids in foster care, there's soup that we're going to talk about now. And you might think, well, you know, we're just all out there doing, you know, good things. What about telling people in words about the gospel? And I would say it's something like this. You back up your words with your actions. And so to me, those two things fit together perfectly that, like Julie said, if people see us and see us as a church that's reaching out and like actually doing loving things for everybody around us and saying that we love people and that God loves them, that all seems to fit together really well. And so the third way, way we want to share about that today is about the soup thing, which I'm, some of you might be aware of this, uh, this happening. Uh, again, we're inviting you to participate in this. Uh, I'll, I'll start out by telling a little bit of the story. So it goes like this. Um, it was probably a year, year or so ago. You guys, some of you might remember me standing up here and saying something like, we have a whole bunch of m- money here at Kish, and we're trying to find ways to spend it for the glory of God. And the deacons were looking at me like, you know, what in the world are you saying? And, um, but, but I meant that, and I got a lot of feedback from people about different ways that we could use uh, what God has given us here to reach out in love to other people. And so one of those things was for the soup thing. And so a guy by the name of Bart Ewing contacted me, uh, if you know Bart, he contacted me and said, I have this idea for this, this soup deal. He sent me a big, long email. Next thing you know, Bart and I went um, on a hike at uh, Pig Pile Trail. Anybody know where Pig Pile Trail is? Yes, very good. There's three of you. Um, so Pig Pile Trail, we went on a hike, and we kind of shared uh, uh, a lot about what this might look like and uh, about the vision and sort of what we were thinking about this, this idea related to soup. And it turned out that we were pretty similarly linked about, about that. And then next thing you know, uh, Bart sort of compiled a group of people, started meeting. We put up a proposal to the deacons at the end of uh, last spring. Uh, they said, yeah, this sounds awesome. Let's go forward with it. Uh, if you notice downstairs, we bought some new stuff to get all ready for that. There's been some more meetings. And now we're basically ready to launch this publicly with all of you. So what, what on earth is it? That's a good question. Um, we purposely want this to not be simply about making and handing out, you know, as much soup as we possibly can. Instead, what we're envisioning is something along the lines of using soup as the tool to relate to and get connected with people in Mifflin County. 
So it's more of a, an entryway or an open door through soup to build relationships and to love people and to invite them and to pray for them and all these kinds of things. And um, so Kathy's going to share a little bit more. Uh, one of the key pieces and why I asked Kathy to come up here is she, if you do or don't know, if you've never met Kathy before, this is Kathy. Um, she's real big into uh, one of our, our, our prayer warriors here. And I'm so thankful for her because not just related to soup, but other areas, but she's really passionate about making the soup thing. I, I think some churches, you either go to like, we're going to do good deeds for people or we're going to tell them the gospel, one or the other. And I think here at Kish, my vision is that I want us to do both of those things. And I think prayer is sort of the linchpin between those two things to make them happen simultaneously and not as two separate entities. And so this is real important stuff. And so Kathy's going to share a little bit about that now. Thank you. My, I'm, I talk with my hands, so, <laughs> so microphone goes like that. I'm sorry. Um, God has gifted me at this portion of my life with... Um, an abundance of time and a true heart to speak to him in prayer on a daily basis about many things. And when the soup ministry um, started up and running, um, we had decided that we wanted prayer to be an integral part of every aspect of this ministry, not just of the giving of the soup, but we wanted God's guidance his advice and his wisdom in every step going forward um, of this ministry. So um, because of that, we prayed quite frequently, actually, at every meeting we had um, for his guidance and where he was going to lead us with this. We continue to pray in that manner. <clears throat> Out of that sprung a group of five people that I personally contacted who I also knew were in the situation that I was that loved God and loved to talk to him. And so we've been praying for the soup ministry, but now I am offering that to the congregation. We are actively seeking people to be a part of that prayer group um, specifically for this ministry, and I'll explain to you why. Um, as as you pick up soup here at our church, which is going to be available for anything, so neighbor has a baby, new family comes into the neighborhood, a death, you just want to go visit someone, the soup will be available to anybody in the congregation, but we will have these books that are going to be right outside the um, freezer. And I, we just ask that you write down the purpose of the soup and the date, real simple. Um, also, as groups begin going out and taking soup into the community, we're also going to send them with these. Um, how simple but yet profound it will be that if as you're having a conversation with somebody that you're giving soup to, that you can just say, is there something I can pray for you today? And we're asking that you then just pray a simple, short prayer. And then again, write it down. And this is why we need this group. We're going to be updating our prayer list, um, depending on how it goes, weekly, monthly. And the group of people who are committed to pray for this ministry, we're going to be sending you out a sheet of specific things to be praying for within our community and also continuing to pray for the soup ministry, that we are doing this exactly <coughs> as God intends, and that we are able to reach people for God through this ministry. It's so easy to get a ministry like this up and going and to completely get so involved in the making of the soup or the giving of the soup that you completely forget that our intent is to take God to this world. So, Very good. So. Thanks, Kathy. <clears throat> Yeah, so let me just wrap up. I'll, I'll, if you're curious about the soup thing, let me kind of give you some more details of what that actually looks like. Uh, we've broken it down into three uh, segments. So there's procurement, which basically means getting ingredients. Uh, production, which is as simple as making soup. 
and then distribution. And so right now, we have teams of people involved in procurement and production. Uh, if you're super interested in getting involved in that kind of thing, uh, we could probably use some more people at some point in time. Uh, if you're interested in any of this stuff, just reach out to me. It's simpler than giving out everybody's contact information, that sort of thing. Uh, where we're going to need help is, is distribution. So the idea is that we're going to freeze the soup in quart containers. There's already a new freezer that's down in what was the old nursery. Uh, you go in there, and there's just a whole bunch of soups with labels in the whole nine yards. And the idea is, uh, like Kathy said, to kind of give it away in three different ways. Number one, like she mentioned, we want to be able to make sure that this is available for everybody from here, because we want, like Julie said, for people to know that Kish is a church that loves people in our community. And so the soup will be there. If you want, you have a neighbor situation, you have a, somebody that you know, their family died, whatever, you get some soup, you take it to them, Kish Church, we love you, that sort of thing. Uh, number two is we're going to do soup distribution. So we'll put this up on Facebook and let people know that we're going to hand out soup. The idea, like I said, is not to give out 4,000 quarts of soup as fast as we can. The idea is to use giving out soup as a way to connect with people who are in need and show them that we love and care for them. We realize that's going to be really complex. It's, it's no surprise. And some of you are sitting there in your brains, you're thinking right now, yeah, there's a lot of people that have tried being you know, generous to people who are in need, and that backfires. We understand there's all those issues, but we think it's still worth trying because we want to communicate that God loves people in Mifflin County, uh, especially those people who think the church maybe is against them or, or doesn't care about their good. Um, the third thing we'd like to do is eventually we're going to have some soup meals here uh, where we invite people to come and, and enjoy a good soup meal put on, hosted by us um, to begin to relate more deeply with them. If you want to get involved, uh, like Kathy said, I think a huge need and area for that and for our church, and I've said this multiple times, so this is, I'm, I'm like a squeaky wheel here, and I understand that, but I, I'm going to do it again on purpose because Prayer is going to be foundational, all this stuff. We're not separating out. We're doing good, and over here's our spiritual lives. Prayer is going to be the link between them. Uh, number two, if you want to give financially, let's say you're not ready to like make a bunch of soup or go and give it out, but you want to give to this, you can give financially through either gift cards or um, on the MyWell. If you use the MyWell app for your giving, uh, there's a place to give directly to the soup ministry on there as well. Um, the other thing you can do is uh, I'm going to email out a list, like Julie said, about stuff for Indian Valley. Uh, I'll also include some stuff that they need, some final odds and ends, aluminum foil, this kind of thing, uh, to get the soup thing actually going. Um, so all of the details will come through the email this week. If you don't get our emails already, let me know, and I can make sure that you can get that or forward to you or whatever. Uh, but I hope you get the heart for today. Uh, the heart for today is basically this. There's all sorts of opportunities, and if you want to get involved in the elementary school, or you want to sign up your name to help kids in foster care, or if you want to uh, get involved in the soup, by all means do that. If you don't want to do that and you want to do something else, by all means do that. Like, we have the chance to do, to be part of what God is doing um, in caring for and loving other people, and that's actually the most helpful for us, because it helps us by becoming less self-centered um, when we care and do good for other people, and so uh, I'm I asked Mark to come up and close our time together in prayer. Uh, we'll sing another song, and then don't forget about those snacks. Uh, you have to turn. All right. Uh, this is a really exciting time, as you've heard this morning. Um, if you've never been the recipient of Kathy's prayers, it's, it's wonderful. So uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what we have heard about here this morning and those acts of kindness that people have already carried out. Uh, we ask that we continue to look for ways to bless others, such as the IV Elementary Project, the orphan needs that Ben mentioned, and the soup project that Kathy talked about. Lord, make us aware of places and circumstances we can show your love for us by helping others in your name. Lord, we thank you for the people involved in these projects. We pray going forward, our eyes are open, our ears are listening, and those prompts lead, us, lead to our hearts giving and our hands doing. Let us see the hurting, the lonely, and those in need. Let us be your church as you see fit, leading us to look beyond those we recognize from Sunday morning to those outside who we can help, but not forgetting those among us who can use a hand as well. Lord, we thank you for those that sense these needs 
We pray that we are led to take action, not of feeling guilt or obligation, but out of the joy we receive from you and the blessings you have given to us. Lord, we know you don't need us to be your hands. You are more than capable of doing this all by yourself. But we thank you for the opportunity to participate in your work. Let us be humble in our actions, deflecting all glory to you. Amen.